Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport. Another big weekend of international rugby. Welcome to the ultimate weekend rugby preview. And uh, we are in for some absolute thrillers. We're going to be looking at three feature games in the All Blacks versus England, Wales versus Australia, and at the Springboks taking on Ireland down in Durban. All of these series are two match series. Just a bit frustrating because, you know, we see the All Blacks uh, go down to England this weekend, for example. We see Wales respond and we see Ireland respond. And all these sort of series are going to finish 2-2, which is a little bit frustrating for the viewer, but is what it is. And I think the main thing is we're looking at, especially these three feature matches, it could have gone either way last weekend. Um, you know, one-point game, seven-point game, a bit of a bigger difference in the Welsh-Australia game. Although, ironically, I think that game for last part of the times actually looked a little bit more sort of even with regards to the in, the performances of the two teams and they're not being that, sh uh, that much between them um but before we go into that please do smash a like on the video please do subscribe to the channel as well um so we're going to be going through uh, all the various different uh, um those feature matches before that let's just have a look at the fixtures itself so we've already seen uh, france beat uruguay 40, 28 uh, 43 points 28 uh, last night uh, in the early hours of Friday morning, we will have Tonga taking on Italy, uh, USA taking on Scotland, and then Canada versus Romania. So we're taking on Spain to start things off early, early on Saturday before New Zealand takes on England. And um, we'll look at that match in, in particular in a bit. Australia versus Wales, Japan versus Georgia, Namibia versus Portugal. Portugal getting a bit of a warm-up ahead of coming to South Africa next week. You then got South Africa versus Ireland, Argentina versus France, Chile versus Belgium, and things end off with Paraguay versus Hong Kong. And uh, we will actually look at the, those games in terms of, excuse me, what they mean with the rankings um, this weekend. But let's have a look at our future games, shall we? And we'll start with England and the All Blacks. Let's have a look at the English side. And uh, not too many changes made from Steve Warwick because at the end of the day, probably were the better side um, last weekend. And had Marcus Smith had his kicking boots on, could very much have been the victors. So the only sort of changes come in the front row. So Finn Baxter will get his first start and he has switched from tight head to loose head and uh, next Jamie George and Will Stewart will start at tight head as well. Continue start at tight head. <coughs> if you look at the bench there, Dan is joined by Bevan Rod and Dan Cole. So the front row, the only places where we have seen um, a bit of changes. Uh, we look at the rest of the pack there, though. It is uh, Mario Toje, George Martin, Charlie Cunningham himself, who I thought was absolutely terrific uh, last weekend. I couldn't, didn't understand why I thought they took him off. Uh, I thought he was really good. Sam Underhill was solid. Ben Earl had his moments. Uh, the rest of the back line, very, very impressive player is the likes of Emmanuel Ferry Wabosi. thought George Furbank had a very good game. Still, I think, a little bit lacking uh, from the centres. And uh, I personally still think that... There is definitely space for Owen Farrell in this 23 if, if he were to reavail himself for international uh, rugby. Not too many changes off the bench there either. If we look at the All Blacks, for example, um, next to no change. The only big change, obviously, is uh, no TJ Perinara. He has been ruled out of the series um, through injury to pity because obviously uh, he's only just come back into the All Blacks sort of setup. Um, so not much changes over there in, in, in his place. Finley Christie gets an opportunity. And then on debut is Cortez Ratime uh, off the bench in the number 21 jersey. Um, I think the All Blacks, I'm almost a bit surprised that there aren't a couple of changes. I think it's a difficult one. You know, whilst I thought uh, uh, Stephen Perifita was was fantastic um, when uh, last weekend at, at moments, for example, especially, you know, when, uh, you know, that, that try assist he had when he sort of that, that step in and around Ben Earl. Um, but I do think the All Blacks look far more settled and a better side when Bowden Bad came on. He sort of calmed things down, was a bit of a calming influence, and I think that they kind of missed that a little bit. So almost a bit surprised we didn't get a start, um, but uh, interesting to see how things go. It'll be interesting to see, obviously, is how much do they continue sort of from last week in terms of the way they want to play, what do they look to change, what do they need to kind of brush up on, where were the issues, and uh, how are things going to look under Steve, um, uh, under under Scott Robertson, who I think was quite open about the fact that it wasn't quite the sort of standard they'd like to get to, but obviously have got plenty of time to try and get things right. My only prediction for this is um, it's Eden Park. Um, they're, they're not losing, the All Blacks. They don't lose there. Um, never have. They've drawn two games, one to the British Irish Lions, one to South Africa. 
Um, so they don't generally lose at Eden Park. Um, so I don't expect them to this weekend. So I think probably all backs by about five. I think five to seven will probably be my prediction. Let me know what yours is down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video whilst we're looking at this. And by the way, a lot of people talking about the fact that they're not getting notifications for the channel. Please make sure you turn on those notifications next to the subscribe button so that you do get notified whenever we publish new content. Let's look at the Wales versus Australia. So the Joe Schmidt era got off to a win last weekend, um, has had to make a couple of changes to his side, um, sort of mostly injury uh, enforced changes, which means that uh, James Slipper uh, returns to the captaincy. Uh, what a servant he has been for, for Australia rugby and um, you know, he will continue to uh, to to be there for, for a while and we'll lead the side in what will be his 136th uh, test. And Matt Fesler continues as well in the front row with Tanea Tupo. Um, Jeremy Williams next to Luckin uh, Salaka Loto. Um, but a bit of a change in that back three. Obviously no Liam Wright, which is why uh, James Slipper is uh, skippering. So Rob Balati moves from the eight to the number six jersey. Fraser McRide continues in the number seven, but uh, the young Charlie Kale will get his second cap in that starting number eight jersey. It's a very big opportunity for him. Uh, Jake Gordon will partner no Lodicea. Uh, the rest of the uh, the back line um, basically remains the same there. Uh, we saw a phenomenal tie by Tom Wright last weekend. It's so good to see him back in Australian jersey. Off the bench, Josh Nasser will get a debut uh, in the number 16 jersey. Isaac Kelly will get earn a second cap, whilst Alan Alatoro will be the experienced front row over there. Apart from that, if you take away Nick White, who returns to the 23, lots of experience there in 66 caps. But apart from that, a very, very inexperienced side. Ben Donaldson, the, the, the fly half, comes in over there, seven tests to him. Dylan Peach has got one test to his name. Langy Gleeson, as well as Angus Blythe, the two other players on the bench over there also uh, very experienced. And uh, we look at, uh, for example, what Wallabies coach Joe Smith said. And he said, uh, we found a bit about ourselves last week and are looking forward to learning a bit more on Saturday night. We've worked hard again this week in Melbourne and we'll be going out to earn the support of those in the stands and those at home on Saturday night. Um, so very much, I think we saw, again, promising signs from, from Australia last week. Looked to be quite expansive in the way they played, for example. Had some really nice moments, um, but um, are very much a work in progress. Very keen to see how things look in a few uh, months' time. In terms of the Wales side, massive news for Wales is no Aaron Wainwright, who has been ruled out this weekend. Hamstring injury, that's him out for sort of the, the tour, really. Um, and a massive loss, that is, for, for um, Warren Gatlin, because he was so good uh last week so um yeah a big a big absentee in is a place um james boken comes into the starting lineup and tommy rafael will start in the eight man jersey interesting to see how he goes i don't think as well as i can recall and find out that he has actually started eighth man so interesting to see how that positional switch will happen and if we look at uh, the rest of the back line cameron winners comes in and uh, starts at full back josh hathaway ruled out with an elbow injury which then sees liam williams shift to the wing um, I'm a big fan of Cameron Winnett. I, I spoke about it last week, and I think he was, for me, one of the big finds of the Six Nations. For me, he looked very comfortable under the high ball, looked to counterattack quite nicely, um, an exciting player. But I think, I think the big thing about the Welsh is, is the pack. They are missing a couple of players, as we know. And uh, But I think Dewey Lake, for example, is really going into his role. Um, Crush Jones have brought some nice physicality last weekend. I'm a big fan of Daft Jenkins. Um, and I think that... That back row, interesting to see sort of how, how things are going to go over there um, because I think it's 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 a back row which is um, which is uh, uh, growing into into themselves. Um, and I think Tame Plunchy at eight, for example, is going to be an interesting one. Um, very young in his career, just four caps. The rest of the of the pack, he's got a lot of experience to be honest. You take away Gareth Davis, who's got thirty two caps. He's the only one with more than twenty. So yeah, and I mean, you look at the halfback pairing, for example, Ellis Bevan and Ben Thomas. You know, five caps between them. But I thought that Ben Thomas showed a lot of promise last weekend. They've got Sam Costello, who's kind of been backed a bit more. Um, and I think because he hasn't quite managed to really, you know, settle in a 10, he is looking at other options, is is Warren Gatland. You've got the experience of a Nick Tompkins off the bench, for example. Um, so Kieran Hardy as well. So there's a couple of nice players come off the bench, but generally not massively um, experienced. In terms of this game, I think Wales, without an Aaron Wainwright, for example, um, without necessarily a firing back, I, I do think that um, that that Australia will, will probably get a, a win as well. Um, again, I'm probably thinking about five-point margin. I don't think it'll be that. 
that comprehensive. Uh, and then finally, the big game of the weekend, isn't it? It is the box versus Ireland. If we look at the box, the exact 23, let's have a look at that, which means that, uh, you know, Ireland will have information now on this 23. Where do I expect some big games? Well, I think the halfback pairing, Fuck the Clerk and Andre Pollard, didn't have their best games last week, if we're going to be brutally honest. I think that's where they'll be looking for a lot of improvement. Um, I do think people are making a very good point. Breakdown was an issue. Uh, Franklin Moss had mentioned in his press conference, speaking about the fact that they want to try and show up that breakdown a bit more, give Fife a bit more protection, a bit cleaner ball, which I think he did struggle. I think, you know, obviously with the new game plan, having a couple of players like a Peter Steph, the Toy Sia, Khaleesi, more in the fringes, meant that they weren't as involved at the time. Got to find a way to sort of counteract that and make sure that Fife Leclerc has got that front foot ball, that clean ball. He needs to be able to up the ante and get that back line going. Andre Pollard, well, he's to get better off the boot this weekend because he was pretty poor last weekend, but uh, we all know the kind of caliber of player he is. Uh, really looking forward to me, for example, seeing how Khaleesi goes after last weekend's performance. Jason Creel, man of the match last weekend. Him and Damien Delende will be breaking the record set by Jacques Rie and John de Villiers for the most capped center pairing in South African history when they start together for the 50th time. So a big opportunity for them uh, to show everybody why. They are the most capped center pairing. And then front row, that's going to be an interesting battle. Oxton Chair, Francois Herber, Bongi Minambi. Bongi Minambi actually spoke about um, the fact that, you know, they'd like to see the referee being a bit more um, decisive when it comes to sort of the, the scrums and, and the decisions surrounding that. So uh, interesting to see how that gets officiated this weekend. Uh, if we look at the Irish side, there are some changes um, and, and some pretty, pretty notable ones as well. Uh, so if we look at the starting lifestyle, I've got the wrong one out there. I'm going to pull it up in a second. Um, the big sort of, obviously, we, knew, we know that, that Ronan Keller here um, has been ruled out. Of, um, has, has come into the side because of the, the injury to Dan Sheehan. And Conor Murray as well um, is uh, starting because of that injury to Craig Casey. Uh, both those players have remained in South Africa and are with the, the team, but um, did not train this weekend. Will play no part uh, in this weekend's game either. So pretty significant changes, those from an injury point of view. You know, you're losing Dan Sheehan, who, who's been such a good and important player for Ireland over the years. Craig Casey, I'm a massive fan of Craig Casey. I think, first of all, he's a fantastic player. But I think maybe more importantly, when it comes to, to sort of the Ireland perspective, is he's as close as they're going to get to a Jamison Gibson Park, who, who I think is their most important player um, and has been their most important player this year. So I think that... That's been a massive loss. But um, looking at that side over there, the big news is um, Kaelin Doris will captain the side, by the way, and um, he will um, start an eighth man in, in, in what is a changed back row because uh, Ty Burner shifted from the lock and gone to the flank. And, and the big news is that that's actually in place of Peter Marnie. So it's a, it's a massive move from, from, from um, Andy Farrell to drop his captain. Uh, some people saying, you know, is this the end of the Peter Omani era? Are we going to potentially see him start another game for Ireland? I don't know. We'll have to wait to see the end of the year. Of the year. But um, Andy Farrell very much speaking about the fact it was almost more the form of James Ryan that necessitated the change rather than maybe the, the lack of form for Peter Omani. But it's definitely a different looking pack. Ty Byrne obviously packs a bit more of a punch in the number six jersey. James Ryan adds a bit more sort of confrontation to, to the mix. So it is a bit of a more physical pack. Uh, even Ronnie Keller here, ahead of Dan Sheehan, is a more physical pack. The breakdown, for example, will be very interesting as well. You know, Ty Byrne can probably have a bit more license to get uh, involved at the breakdown. Josh Van der Fleer, Kalen Doris, all very capable in and around that area. And the other big change is uh, no Bundy Aki this weekend. Didn't think it was his best game last weekend, but um, a, a shoulder injury, for example, is preventing him from playing. As a result, Gary Ringrose comes into the side and Robbie Henshaw switches from 13 to 12. That in itself is not an issue for Ireland. Robbie Henshaw is so adept at playing 12 or 13. And those two players know each other very well, play at, at Leinster together, have played so much rugby together. So, yeah, they won't have to worry about sort of chemistry. Big game for James Lowe, for example, had those moments last weekend. Um, you know, two big ones, which kind of, not that cost Ireland the game, but, um, you know, were, were very significant in, in terms of the game. If we look at the bench, um, no change to the placement front. Uh, sorry, Rob Herring comes into the bench, rather. Uh, no change to the placement props in Kian Healy and Finley Bielham. But, and Ryan Beard there. But Peter Omani dropping down to the bench. Colin Blake comes in as well. Kieran Frawley remains. But Stuart McCloskey comes in to add another centre option. Um, so also interesting to see that uh, they've gone with him, who's very confrontational, brings a lot of physicality to um, the field when he does come on. 
This game, again, I expect Ireland to be very good, to be honest. Ireland have not lost more than two games in a row since 2021. Andy Farrell will be, playing, will be managing or taking charge of his 50th game this weekend. He has won 80%, the highest winning percentage of any um, manager in, in or coach in Ireland history. So I do expect to see a big response from, from Ireland. I think if South Africa are to win, they're going to have to be much better than last weekend. Much more accurate, I think than last weekend because it's not Fortress Loftus. You know, we don't have as good a result um, down in Durban. Conditions will be a bit different. It's not quite as uh, daunting, I think, as playing at Loftus. It's not at sea level. I mean, at, at altitude, it is bound down here at sea level. So I think conditions favor Ireland a bit more than at Loftus. I think everything points to them being having it a bit easier this weekend. So the only thing that can really, um, you know, make it difficult for them is the opposition. That was what Andy Farrell had to say. And that's all about the Spring Mocks getting things right this weekend, putting them on the back foot and 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 you know searching that home advantage and, and putting them through uh the 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 most. So uh what are your predictions for all the games down in the comments below? Please do smash the like on the video, turn your, your notifications on, subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, we'll see you this weekend for the watch alongs of these three feature games. We'll have trackers over to carry cup throughout the weekend as well. So let me know what you think is going to happen down in the comments below. My name is Steve. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.